Welcome to Softcore History. Hello and welcome back to the Softcore History Podcast. My name is Jake Goldman. I will be your host for today. It's my day, my episode, my rules. It's my time. It's my time. That's down Rob here. Fox talking over me. So, hey, Dan, how are you today? Dan or Jester, our other host? Don't care. Great to be back. Yeah, I wasn't always. here last week, unfortunately. That's um, what I heard, yeah. Yeah, so um, you just weren't? Great to be back in the saddle. Not mentally. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're on Phone's your phone. Phone's been hold. put away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good. Good. This is a lot to learn. I like today. that you gave me just a preview of my life as a father, like 15 years from now. Put your goddamn <laughs> phone down. And you're going to be yelling at kids to get up and down. I, uh, There's not a chance in hell they still have phones in 15 years. No. You're not going to know they're looking at it. It's going to be a chip be, in their I'm brain. I'm just going like, to walk into the bathroom and watch my son. Like He wouldn't be masturbating. He'll just be fucking a hologram. You'll be so lucky as to see what your son's fucking if you walk in. Like he probably, it'll probably be like it? so self-contained. It's like in his mind. Like you know what I mean. You don't even know what weird shit he's up That's to. That's true. So I'll just, but he will still be doing something. So he'll just be like, you'll have to watch the video for this. But he'll just be like, you ever well, won't see what's happening. You ever been to a silent disco? Yeah, it'll be, a, <laughs> it'll yeah. be like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what? Silent I think orgy. we're gonna actually. I would argue we're gonna revert back. He's just gonna be fucking a tin can. Okay. <laughs> What era is that for? I think I think my son's Depression? gonna my son's gonna catch me like normal masturbating and he's like, ew, you do it analog, you <laughs> fucking creep. God, you fuck your own hand. I mean, oh. once we go into a nuclear apocalypse and we live out fallout. Yeah. Well, I was reading that uh, nuclear winter is not even really a thing anymore that they think would happen. Uh, it's just more of like a a nuclear kind of just Meh. Texas winter. <laughs> it's like nuclear. Autumn. You know why I'm not worried about uh, nuclear winter in Texas? Because I'll just wait five minutes and the weather will change. <laughs> Ooh, nice, <laughs> I live in nice. Texas. And the power grid will be down regardless. Yeah, I mean, it'll be down before anything happens. Yeah. That's not us saying what will happen. Don't come and look for us. But Which I would like to uh, <laughs> just kind of bring this up. Remember when we did an entire episode on a history show about the winter storm mm -hmm. because we thought we were living through history and now <laughs> there's currently like... I am going to do... My next is going to be on Russia. Okay. I am going to do... We've already done like 18 episodes on Russia. I know, but this is going to be like a broad history of... Because Putin is like... What's funny is, and I've said this other places, like with the invasion of Ukraine... People get really hung up on the whole, like, reestablish the USSR thing. That's a total fucking red herring. This guy's not a fucking communist. He doesn't even like communism. Honestly, if you asked him about, like, the actual tenets of communism, socialism, like, the people, can, the workers. You want me to text him right now? Yeah, 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 please do. He would, like, the people, the workers, like, the, the common man, he, he would kind of just be like, that's queer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what he's into. He's very aggro. He's a, he's a czarist. Like, he wants... He wants to be like a fucking like Christian monarch. He wants pogroms. Yeah, he wants like, fucking. That's what yeah. he fucking wants. It, it's super religious nationalism. Yeah, like the, yeah. The only thing he likes about the USSR is that that was when Russia was its most influential and powerful. Right. The actual like they didn't. They didn't this is not a real communism hasn't been tried thing, but like the actual whatever behind it, whatever the fuck you wanted to call that, he doesn't care about the how like the governance or, or what the, what the philosophy was. He was just like, dude, we were huge yeah. and really powerful. And that was dope. Yeah. It's like, but uh, he'd rather be a czar. It's like Nebraska reminiscing about the wishbone. Right. They're like, yeah, we don't really care and about, we, we don't want to do that again. When you bring yeah. They want to be Scott as Frost, good. You know? Yeah. They want to be as good as when they ran the option, but they don't want to run the option. No, again. that's, that's not going to work. Right. That's going to be terrible to watch. Well, but they're trying to figure out how to pay Scott Frost to leave soon. Yeah. Already, huh? What do you be, what do you mean already? He's been there for a what four or five years now? They, that quarterback's been there just as long as he has. They, <laughs> well, Nebraska. No, no. Actually, Martinez transferred to uh, Kansas State. Oh, yeah. Like Russia, Nebraska needs to understand who they really are. Dead. Yeah. Dying Not, empire. Well, they were the best three and nine team in the country this past year. They really were. <laughs> that like, that's a weird thing to they say. They were in they, every single game. They. I think they lost everything by like one score, right? Or they lost a lot by one score. Couldn't possibly be coaching. No. That's not a coaching issue. No. That's effort. From that's actually team. kind of like a luck issue at that's that point. If you're losing field. by one score every game, that's almost – it takes like really bad luck to, to lose like seven games by one score. It does. But today we're going to talk about history instead of that. Okay. Because we tried that once. Well, that happened in the past, so. 
No, not as long not, as we don't talk about in right our now. Past. Not in our past that we're allowed to talk about. Okay, that's true. We I, have a 20-year rule. That's except right. when Rob wants to talk about the ice storm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Russia. Anyway, we're going to talk. This is old for me. I'm going like old history. This is old for me, not yeah. you, Rob. But uh, this is uh, going to be, we're talking 15th century uh, Italian empires. Sick. Hey, Just Mambo. Mambo Italiano. Italiano. Yeah, except no. There is no unified Italy right now. Really. Italy didn't unify till after the Civil War. Yeah. So we're going to be talking specifically about the Florentine Empire. But uh, this whole entire episode is going to involve conspiracy, noble bloodlines. Wow, Sick. surprise. Yeah, right. Money and power. There are, these are all central tenets in a murder plot that we will be discussing today. It's set in 15th century Florence, and it circles around the Medici family. Now, did they give the Scarface speech? There was some random guy playing like a, what do you call it, an accordion? Yeah. While some marble mouth dude was While he goes, bro. first, you get the money. With his, you guys oh, are, I'm talking about the Godfather. Yeah, I'm talking about the Godfather. <laughs> yeah. Al Pacino films. Yeah, that happens though. You know, I was watching clips of the other day. That's like the funniest fucking movie. But it like really bums you out as Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. That movie, dude, I've tried to get through Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross a couple times, but it's not a movie you can get really high and watch. No, but the funniest part of it, and I don't know if it's satire or if that's just how yeah, people this thought back. Yeah, broad reference. Everyone's going to get this. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Coffee's for closers. Everyone knows yeah. that. ABC, always be closing. Okay. But the funniest part is like over and over again, including in that speech, they're like, <laughs> they're like selling like vacation real estate or like nice homes or whatever. Like, yeah. and I literally, I'm building a home right now, right? Like I've been in this, I've been on the other side Congratulations, I guess, dude. Like you Thanks. make enough money to build a home. Thank you. make the same amount of money as me. <laughs> no, I make more than you. Good. You yeah. should. Thank God. I felt bad about that for a while. Yeah. You do more than me. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. I thought it was funny, but no. I mean, it wasn't right. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I was trying to find my place. And oh. I missed your joke. But no, like it, it, throughout Glen Gary, Glen Ross, they're like selling like new homes or something. Yeah. But these salesmen are like, "You think you could fuck around? This is a man's game. What <laughs> makes you think you got the balls?" And I'm like building a house, like these guys are selling, and I'm like, "What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Like you think you got the fucking stones for this?" <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you, you queer! Fuck you! Like, that's the whole movie. And I'm like, Again, that's, that is that's, the entire movie. Yeah, it is nuts. That is too queer. Q, Q, <laughs> Q drops by Rob, but he was in character for both, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not using the word myself, but no, like, that movie's fucking hilarious. It's funny in, like, Heinz, like, if you really put the context to it, yeah. It's, yeah. it's I'm like, guys, you're, you're selling, like, what would today be like a five hundred thousand dollar home? This is not high stakes shit. Like, Glen, calm down. Yeah, Glengarry Glen Ross, and there's another movie that just puts me to sleep every time. time I know. Try it's to a good tell movie. that to me when I was doing hard money lending. Okay. <laughs> Dude, no. Did hard people money lending, routinely no, no, no. walk up to you and be like, "What the fuck do you think you're doing here? You three fucking, points, three fucking points." <laughs> You limp this? dick at eight percent, little boy. I can go down the street right fucking now, get two points at four five. Sure. Should we make a sketch that's like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, but it's selling like even lower stakes shit, uh, like candy for, bars for Boy Scouts, like Cutco or something? You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? It's Cutco, Cutco knives. Yeah, God. we have to run a background. You think check. you got the fucking balls <laughs> to walk into a house and sell knives like you're a man? What's funny is. Knives were one of the prizes you would win. I know, it's a <laughs> clever. If you didn't get the car, yeah. you got the knives. If you didn't get the knives, you got fired. Yeah. What's yeah. awesome, though, too, is there's nobody behind the board right now. So uh, no idea if we're blowing out the mic. It's fine. Oh, no, yeah. probably. The best part, I love that. God, that movie. That, the line, I don't think that you can watch that movie as a whole, but the lines in it are so good. You're a good dad. Fuck you. Go home and play with your kids. <laughs> yeah, They're so- just like, it's cutthroat. But it's for like Imagine- middle America real estate. Yeah, that's like uh, the guys at Best Buy selling fridges. That should be who it is. <laughs> think when's you can the last come here and sell a Buy. refrigerator with a TV in it? You when's think the, this is a boys' game? When's the last time Best Buy actually sold a fridge? I can't, like, at least once. Would they ever? They have to. They still have them. Do appliance uh, still, like, do those stores still exist, really? Well, um, Dan, it's really fucked up you just said that. Uh, is my, this a segue into the Medici family? <laughs> No, it's a segue into the Goldman family history. We are appliance people, Dan. I don't know if I've told you this. Goldman appliances. Okay. Like washers, dryers. 
Uh, yeah, pretty much everything. We don't standard. sell it anymore. Actually, we just do the service. The you game. Well, yeah, you still money launder, but no, that's the worst part. We don't do anything shady for a Jewish business. You don't sell. It. Well, you exist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we will be talking about shady businesses, but not <laughs> Jewish ones today. Do you have an uncle that sells jewelry? I don't know. Probably right. Uh, maybe. Yeah. There's some it's guy racist. that's just yeah. losing bets and flipping Bart Simpson chains up in New York. That's related to me somewhere. This is how I win. <laughs> yeah, dude. I didn't care for that movie to be that honest. Movie with you. That movie did suck. Thank you the for the best part that. about that movie was uh, Julia Fox, right? Is that the, who the love whatever, interest was? Yeah. Kanye West's. Yeah, ex- no, we're not talking about yeah. Um, anyway, today we will be discussing the Pazzi conspiracy to murder Lorenzo de Medici and his brother Giuliano. Well, was he asking for it? You'll find out. I don't know, man. They make great coffee. Medici does make good coffee. Medici and is that just in Austin? I think that is just an yeah, awesome. Great. I'm sure there's another Medici coffee out there. Right? I'm a Folgers the, guy. Yeah. You're a f- Folgers? Folgers? Folgers, man. No. <laughs> Soft tweet. Speaking of G pronunciation, it's like 2024, God's just going to come down and be like, it's pronounced Jod. Yeah, go back, <laughs> up. Go back up. up. That, that was good. Laugh. Uh, the details surrounding the conspiracy are nothing short of a Game of Thrones meets Godfather cloak and dagger enthusiast's wet dream. Sick. But before we discuss the plot and outcome of the hit that took place in 1478 Florence, it is incredibly important to understand the historical significance of the Medici family and their contributions to not only Italian society, but the entire Renaissance itself. This is a banking family, right? The Medici family is, drum roll please, a banking family. Hey! (laughs) Yeah, you got it. Do what I can. Uh, A few of their innovative banking techniques and financial instruments they used to amass their wealth and banking empire are still used commonly today. I mean, the Italians essentially like invented modern banking. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And And now they're kicking their fucking feet up. Yeah. They're they're slacking off. I think Italy's been resting on its laurels since the Renaissance, to be completely frank. Well, they tried in World War II, but they did a very bad job. Yeah. They thought they were going to nail it. And they just got to. Couldn't even take down Ethiopia. Yeah. That's not. That's not good. Um, For some finance nerds out there, here are the three biggies that are still around in today, like as far as like modern banking stuff. So this is insane to me. Like this will tell you. They invented these things. Yeah. Wells Fargo. (laughs) No. Uh, Double entry accounting, which, what do you think that is? Because this cracked me up because it's like no one thought of this. Well, like verifying your identity? No. Double entry accounting is uh, how you calculate assets basically by combining um, liability and equity on the same ledger. So okay. instead of like, this is everything we spent on this paper. This is everything we got on this paper. Like in total God, separate gotta, books. Yeah, we got to reconcile this. Yeah, like, no, okay. they were like, no, just do it on the same fucking ledger. Oh, all so right. yeah, it's a, it's a really quick way to calculate your real time equity okay. or your real time asset holding. Like what your actual net worth is. Yeah, right. Because someone could be like, oh no, he's got like uh, 20 million lira or whatever the fuck they used on that. But then you look over, it's like, oh no, he's 30 million in debt. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, he has that, but the liabilities that he has and the debts he owes, yeah, he actually yeah. doesn't have anything. Uh, the other, another big thing they established were the first holding companies. So, like, it wasn't actually called a holding company, but they had so many branches of the bank that um, they had a head branch that kind of had financial control of all of them and okay. invested an interest in all of them in order to. They basically had a share of the controlling power of each of these branches, and that's what a holding company is. They don't produce anything or trade anything or anything like that. It's mm. just. Controlling interest in other companies. It's the best kind of company. It's a company of companies. Yeah. Yeah, basically. And then the most important thing they did, and if anyone knows me personally, this is going to be really fucking annoying to hear, but they invented the letter of credit. Do you remember the job I had before the job I just left? I don't off the top of my head. I was, I worked for a company that produced software for a letter of credit trade finance documentation. Sounds legit. Good yeah. lord, you just put me to sleep. Oh, I'm about to put you to sleep more in a Jesus second. I, I, what? I re- what? You're through that the rest of the episode? <laughs> no, the I just rest- said that line was boring, and you're like, oh, it gets worse. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm just going to explain what a letter of credit is, though, because it is actually really important understanding how they got so fucking rich so fast. Perfect. This is like... This is like when I'm having someone do my taxes and they're explaining it to me and I get so bored that I'm like, I'll give you 10,000. I'll give the IRS $10,000 to leave Could right we now. we not just bring somebody else in to be kind of like a guest speaker for this? Kind of like Margot Robbie and <laughs> here's Margot Robbie short. in the bathtub. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, you right. get Jake Goldman in a sweater. <laughs> That's it. You're looking, you know, a little svelte. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. When's your thin. fight? When's your body fight? <laughs> Our body fight. That's uh, May. Yeah. Yeah. I lifted, I lifted five times last week. Look at you. Just five reps. Yeah. That's yeah. That's now. It. Who's judging it? The fans. Uh, the fans. We're the leaving fans it up to the fans. The fans are judging who's hotter? Yeah, yeah, and we get to pick our picture. Okay, cool. 
Yeah. Well, we'll just take pictures. Cool. We'll, oh, we could just take pictures. Yeah, we'll do you want to do glam shots? Pop top. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to do crop top. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but in our new merch, we should, yeah, we'll do a little merch shot. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I like that. You should take uh, one of the uh, Unabomber hoodies and like just cut, make it a crop top hoodie, cut it like through so you only get like sunglasses up. That's actually pretty hot. Yeah, I think I'd do that. Yeah. With hot. a show some belly button. weapon, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out to whoever sent us that. I forget his That's, name. Uh, yeah, I just, cannot be please, <laughs> please use it to keep peace. That's what I'm going to say. No, you oh. can wear our merch doing like, whatever uh, you want. This feels yeah. like I'm going to get subpoenaed. Yeah. It's like, why? how did this happen? So um, I'm going to just quickly break down what a letter of credit is. It is important to know this is how they amassed wealth. And you'll understand why in a second. So a letter of credit is an agreement in which a buyer's bank guarantees to pay the seller's bank at the time of goods or services delivered. Uh, for example, like uh, they would authorize to receive pounds in the London branch at 40 pence to the florin at exactly 90 days after the service was rendered. So there's some financial exchange here too, as far as like currency mm-hmm. exchange. Um, during the early Middle Ages, usury or lending of money for interest was a cardinal sin, yes. which posed a problem for banking institutions such as the Medici's because the church kind of controlled everything. The church, uh, as much as people are like, fucking student loans and love debt and Church everything, would never let that happen. People get, like you get a middle class off of debt. Yeah, no, right? I mean. Like you get, because think about it, what's a mortgage? No, everything. Fucking debt. You cannot buy things that are really, really expensive without debt. Right. It's it's a financial instrument. I've it's tried. Not, yeah. It's not a bad word. Like, I mean, if you look at most global superpowers, national debt, they're all in debt. Yeah. No, it's not just us. Like, don't think that's just the thing right. we got to fix. Right. Everything I think is of debt-based. myself as a nat. Like a. You're a small nation state of debt. Yeah. And you're just running well, up a debt Danistan. in order to pay for bigger things. <laughs> Afghanistan? No, Dan- just Danistan. Just Danistan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Afghanistan, Dan. My dad's probably bigger than their GDP, so. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, so, during the Middle Ages, uh, you know, usury was a cardinal sin. A letter of credit was one of the ways they could disguise interest within transactions and refrain from, like, pissing off the papacy. Yeah. It's hilarious that the people closest to the Vatican figured it all out. Oh, yeah. Like, you would think this would be, like, something that happened in, like, England since... But they were just like, no, I want to divorce my wife. Yeah, so... Now, were they... Was this kind of like them accumulating all the other people's debts and buying the debts into like one type of? Th- no, this isn't like a collateral. What is it called? A a CDO, a cl- yeah. like collective debt obligation or whatever it is. Right. It's we're, not that we're gonna get way out of our debt. Yeah. Really it's quickly. yeah. No, I, I I'm gonna keep it the letter of credit. Basically, what it is is the bank of the buyer pays the bank of the seller. It's a bank to bank transaction first because like if you're selling but the something, bank's not buying other banks debt no no no. there's no there's no debt trading here but there's interest so using the example above of like okay uh floor into a pound so um the london branch of the bank would then turn around and find someone wanting to purchase florins in florence but at the rate of 36 pence to a florin so there's a four percent gain of like, or not 4%, but like there's a difference of money that's happening when the foreign exchange is happening. Right. I do not have enough time to explain a letter of credit here. To be honest with you, I'm not going to try to, but our listeners are going to be disappointed. I could kind of feel it already. Oh, okay. Well, do you have an hour? <laughs> like I can explain it to you. It would be two episodes. Please no. Yeah. So basically oh, God, no. the way <laughs> think about it, at like correspondent banking, like, you know, Russia's getting kicked out of swift so they can't have international banks like trading right. capital in t- order to maintain yeah, the capital. Or in it, like Russia wants to make a transaction. They got to send a fucking fax. Yep. Yeah. It's so basically the kind of transactions that are happening with a letter of credit are bank transactions. Right. So, when the banks turn around and move the currency, there's actually a point interest on that. And like the Medici's can actually offer financing on payments from that. So, right. When this, when so the, they found a way to make money off of nothing, when the buyer's bank turns around and collects from the buyer, the Medici's can turn around and be like, Hey, instead of having the bank's interest, you know, you can pay us directly instead at an interest rate. Right. So they're, they're creating financing basically so for larger purchases out of, the, out of thin fucking air. Yeah, no. And that is not, an old antiquated thing. That is how most commodities companies make their money. Right. If you want to look it up, a lot of commodities companies sell at a loss, but the financing on the deal is what actually makes them the money and margin. God, we're going to get so many finance bros in our DMS just telling us how wrong we are about everything. That's fine. Come come at me, dude. I'm not a fucking finance guy. I, I like to always take the position. No, I'm not wrong. You're wrong. 
Yeah. Anyway, I'm just misinformed. Uh, these techniques, especially the loopholes, avoiding the sin of charging interest, allowed them to gain tremendous sums of power and become the de facto rulers of the Florentine Empire. By the way, the uh, usury or whatever, uh, a f fun side effect of that was anti-Semitism. Oh, no, because Jews could charge right. interest. So Jews were the only thing that was actually allowing modern industry to happen. Right. So any money grubbing thing you hear about Jews, like any stereotype or whatever that comes from. It's correct. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're just going to ignore this entire, entire Italian, the Italians creating right. the monster. Today's but yeah. Hitler is Dan. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, like that's how they got that stereotype was because they were the only ones allowed to like lend money no, on. It credit was the Jewish like loophole. Right. Like, yeah, we were like, Christians wanted us to do it. They yeah. were like, "Hey, you can do this, yeah. so do it." And Jews were the Jews were the financial hole in the sheet. Basically, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> A lot of stereotypes, man. <laughs> oh God. They were the financial soaking. <laughs> sure. You know what I mean. The hole in the sheet was good for anyone that got it. Yeah. Um, while this isn't necessarily a rags to riches story about the Medici family, it is extremely significant for the period as it was one of the first major families to elevate itself from just like upper class to ruling class without any real, like prior claim to nobility or any family being elected or appointed into office. They ruled behind the scenes. And as much as I tried to look into highly nefarious dealings that they did, there's not a lot of like crazy stuff. Right. Like, you know, like you think like Rothschild right. and all this shit. No, because it didn't need to be hidden That's or like, concealed. Yeah, it's like saying like, dude, what was Bill Gates up to? He invented a fucking computer. That's no, they invented modern right, banking. Right, right, so yeah. of course they're yeah, rich. Like what that's was Bill Gates doing with all that farmland. <laughs> right. Um, but no, so wait, they were, uh, they weren't, they weren't noble. They were like craftsmen, tradesmen. They, they were, were artisan bankers. Art essentially. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, not artisan bankers, but they were, they were a tradesman. <laughs> right. Do you want my artisanal credit? <laughs> it kind of was like, <laughs> so, um, basically the craziest thing that's happening, it's just wealthy people doing wealthy things without multinational oversight. Tell me when to stop. Yeah. What are you doing? Just tell me when to stop. I don't even know are what are you are you grinding some cheese or maybe even oh. some some black pepper. Yeah. That's artisan. Yeah, to, to me. <laughs> to yeah. Olive Garden. It's Olive God. Garden. <laughs> okay. It's also important to note just how significant their contributions were to the overall European cultural awakening that was the Renaissance. Okay. So, uh, cost you know, Renaissance does mean reawakening. No, that doesn't translate. Mm, no, I had to translate it. I had to, so what? Are you trying to dunk on me right now? Yeah. Cool. Uh, Cosimo Medici, the family's patriarch, contributed uh, during his time uh, roughly half a billion dollars to art and culture in Florence and Europe. Okay. So seems like a waste. This is what I always say. I, everyone's like, eat the rich. And I'm like, no, I will put the rich in my mouth, but it'll be to fillet them. Yeah. Well, to anyone that's like, eat the rich about these guys, if these guys didn't finance the Renaissance, we wouldn't have most of the things we have today. Yeah. Like I kind of get the idea that most people who are like eat the rich don't understand that they're just, we would still think the earth was the center of the well, universe right. without they're the rich. Like, yeah, standing. Isn't it great? Like we're all serfs and they're like, isn't it great? We're all equal now. I'm pretty sure Da Vinci did like 95% of the legwork for the Renaissance. Yeah. Yeah. He created everything. Hmm. Okay. Well, sure. early, yeah. <laughs> everything. Who? I'm sorry, who? Da Vinci. Da Vinci did do a lot. He, he didn't did. do everything. Little though. gliders. Yeah, that's how everyone's getting around. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if like you time traveled back to like Florence? Oh, it's just, everyone like, flying around. Like, on like Da Vinci's <laughs> bicycle airplane. People rolling around like the yeah. perfect Whee! man. Yeah. I would just be like, I'm never leaving. <laughs> this is the coolest. Yeah. yeah. So uh, early on, Cosmos supported the painter uh, Masaccio and helped pay the architect. I don't know. You don't um, gotta pronounce yeah, it. to rebuild the Basilica of San Lorenzo. Um, other famous artists that the Medici family supported include Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello, and Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> oh, <So> the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah. I just thought of that as I was reading. <laughs> oh, I thought you did that on purpose. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's who they are. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's literally. Uh, but the Calabunga did. <laughs> the Medici didn't just support the arts and architecture; they also supported science. Uh, they helped the scientist Galileo Galilei in his scientific efforts. Galileo also worked as a tutor for the Medici children, which is insane. And that's like Einstein is my family tutor. Well, you know who tutored Alexander the Great, right? Who Socrates? That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, so this is think about this. This isn't even like a and, noble p family that's yeah. getting this level. 
No, Plato was dead. But he did both? Plato tutored Socrates. Socrates tutored Alexander the Great. Oh, Aristotle was Plato? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Fuck. Yeah. Aristotle, yeah, Aristotle, wrong, Aristotle yeah, my bad. Aristotle tutored. You're wrong on so many things, but you're so confident. So it's like. It sounds good. It always sounds right. Yeah. I know. That's how you win with him. Yeah. And then if he tells you you're wrong. But yeah, just, Socrates won. Plato, Plato two. Then Aristotle. Aristotle. Aristotle tutored Alexander. I'm wrong. I feel bad. Fact check in real time. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, so speaking of Galileo, Medici family actually protected him from the Roman uh, Inquisition. I was about to ask if yeah. they had any a hand they, in that. They are the was... ones that stayed everything. Oh, they sick. were like, nope, you're not fucking yeah. this guy up. So because he proposed, hey, it doesn't revolve around the earth. It revolves around the sun. Yeah. And that was heresy at the time. I actually am still, uh, I'll, I'll go ham on someone who tries to pitch me heliocentrism. Well. It's just bullshit. It's just a lie. Because the church never, did the church ever switch their opinion on that? Uh, I'm actually, you know, I'm or like, they a, just let that one go. I'm a real pre Vatican II guy. I still okay. go to Latin mass and believe earth is the center of the, yeah, the priest the is facing, his back is towards us. Yeah. Yeah. We're so, not worthy of communion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So being separate from or looking him in the eye. No. I'm, I've got more episode. Ring the bells. Yeah. Although their power was not absolute, it was pretty close to it by being separate from the state and the church. They were able to buy the progress they wanted to see in Florence without having to tiptoe through balancing act that was legislating with placating the papacy. Well, first off, they weren't part of that big of a state, right? I mean, Florence Italy pretty, at this time was like a city, a bunch of city states. Is, mm, how much land? I don't know how much like Florence controlled at that it's, time. It's a pretty it was large like Florence, fl Venice, Genoa. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Genoa. So, Genoa. Um, um, Rome. Obviously, obviously Milan. Yeah, well, Rome was the Vatican. Yeah. yeah. Milan. That was the other one. I was yeah. Trying to think Milan's Milan. a big one. Milan actually but comes these, up. These were all city states. Like they're it, like you, they're small empires. Yeah. Like, like, they have like smaller towns within them. It's kind of like counties. It's really big yeah, counties. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And and, and they heads. were all financially powerhouses, but they didn't. Yeah. They didn't run a lot. Or yeah. like they didn't have a lot of land. I guess you say. For sure. No. I mean, it wasn't like. Yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good way to think of it is like there's a county with smaller towns and there's like a county seat, which is, yeah. would be like Florence is the seat right. of the Florentine Empire. I mean, I would, I think like just looking back on a map, they were all kind of the size of like, I don't know, New Jersey or something, maybe a little smaller. It's a pretty big state. It's not that big land wise, big population wise, I guess. No, it's pretty big land wise as well. It's, it's not Delaware. It's. New Jersey is in the bottom 15 of land state, maybe bottom 10. But if you're saying these are city states, that's a massive city. It's not. City state doesn't mean that the entire area is a, is a city. No. It means a city. It's just a small country is basically what it means. Yeah, they're all little small republics, right? So, like, here's a pretty good map for you, Rob. So, like, Florence would be, where is Florence? It's like. See how the size of them are like this? It's kind of yeah, like, yeah, they, yeah. It, like it's a county. I don't really know how I would say so. I would uh, like to see the size of Italy next to New Jersey. Well, I'm not doing that right yeah, now. Yeah, we got, we got other shit. We got a lot of pages to get through here. So speaking of the papacy, though, uh, the Medici family became trusted as the bank of the Vatican. Oh. So they were helping finance bigger construction projects well, and I things guess, like that. I guess some people could could use credit yeah, yeah yeah exactly uh so by doing that they were able to get influence and in getting cardinals and archbishops placed that were their family members as right. well and um they eventually had four popes come from their line sick they had pope leo the 10th pope clement the 7th pope pius the the fourth and pope leo the 11th mm. four popes from a family that's insane all the leos were good everyone knows that were they that's why there was 11 of them uh, one last fun fact as far as what they've influenced, though. Uh, the Medici may be directly linked to the advent of realpolitik political theory. What does that mean? Uh, Those are words. Re realism in politics, like um, rationalism. Oh, being like pragmatic? Pragmaticism, yeah. yeah. So uh, they threw Machiavelli in prison for conspiracy against their family, which is like something I guess you could do if you were rich enough. It's yeah, like, why not? Yeah. You could do that now. Uh, and he was like tortured for a year. And during this period, he wrote the draft that would eventually be published as the Prince. Ah, yeah. And which people now are like, that was satire. It's kind of, there's a couple different ways you can look at the Prince. So when I was reading it in school, um, in my political science degree coursework, uh, yeah, you can look at it as like, 
he's being tortured by this family. He's like, oh, yes, I want you to rule so well. <laughs> like, this is how you should do it, you fucking monsters. Like, here's the big old book. Yeah. You're so smart. Ooh. Yeah. But uh, so it was really the first proposition, though, of pragmatism over idealism as a way of successfully governing because the world was, like, growing a lot smaller with international trade. So it wasn't trade. even said. It was patronizing. It, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. yeah. But no, I mean that's how that's how most modern politics is done today. I like that someone was like, you know what? Instead of going to war with that country every time they mildly offend me for my honor, I don't know. What if we did business with them and just like you know, sanction them, hash them. shit out? Yeah. Or if they really put. <laughs> it's like it's such a common. Well, the whole premise of the prince isn't like. Obviously, it's better to be feared than love, but you should be both is yeah. the, the main takeaway there. It's yeah. like, yeah, but also the big takeaway is like if you're doing politics based off of ideals, you're never going to get anything done because people don't operate like that. Ideals are not people. People skirt. Tell that to the current American voter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So that's in a big nutshell. In a very quick time, the Medici family and their rise to power and their influence over the world today. I mean, shit, I had, I had a job for two years because of the Medici family inventing the letter of credit. That's insane. You owe them. I do. You should lay flowers on their grave. It's a giant, giant tomb. Sick. They, used to, they owned like 27 villas across, I think, maybe just Florence, but it might have been all of Italy. But yeah, like they have... 27 villas in that small of an area seems excessive. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. Even in Italy, 27 villas, like, we're not talking like, oh, I have a yeah, house in Cabo. Like, it doesn't... It's a castle. Like, they, yeah. Well, also, there's only like four different parts of Italy. You know what I mean? There's mountains... There's, I guess, inland, and then there's like... 27 there's houses the across the world is too much. Like, no, the, you can find 27. Look, if you're rich and like... I wouldn't blame Jeff Bezos for having a house in every different type of like climate you could have. Yeah, just so you... I want it to be misty today. Yeah. And you just fucking super that jet That's fine. Over. Like, I need a tropical Pacific, mm -hmm. tropical Caribbean. I need mountains. I mean, just imagine having 27 toilets. That's excessive. Yeah, all his houses should be one toilet, one bathroom. Well, they yeah. probably were what back he, then. What it was he, just the window. Yeah, what if he was like Elon Musk? He was like super rich, but all his homes were tiny. Is that what his deal is? That's what Musk claims he was doing, but he's been staying on Lake Austin. Yeah, okay. In a mansion, so. Um, well, to but paint, it's his bro's mansion. It's not his mansion. Oh, true. Well, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, the president of Tesla. What is his name? Uh, fuck, I forget. Never mind. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start setting the scene now for the actual conspiracy that we're going to be talking about today. It's just really important to know the Medici. So uh, in 15th century Florence, the other family that we're going to talk about is the Pazzi family. Uh, they were both wealthy and well-established. The family traces its origins to the early year of the 12th century when one of their ancestors became the first man to scale the walls of Jerusalem in the first crusade. So that's a pretty crazy thing to like lie about if they were lying, but probably worked. I guess, man. They lost. So. Yeah. It's like, okay. Uh, the Pazzi had capitalized on their noble status, so they were a noble family, and they had also entered the banking profession. Um, and they were pretty damn successful, but by the mid-15th century, they were kind of falling apart as the Medici were rising, okay. and the Medici, Medici overtook them, basically. Well, one family and rises. And also, this is, Medici's kind of new money trash. Yeah, and they're running the fucking ship. Yeah. It's not like like these guys weren't running. It was a lot more like wide. The influence was way more spread apart and like uh, what do you want to call it? Like decentralized. Right. Until the Medici show up. Yeah. It's mainly just the papacy and the legislators, and then you know some rich guys. Yeah. And now it's like the Medici's like we don't even need that shit. Like, we can yeah. we control the money. Imagine you're like the Vanderbilts and the Hamptons, and then you know Eric Trump busts out of a bathroom covered in cocaine. Yeah. Right? He's not doing cocaine the right way. No. He's not doing cocaine classy. Uh, quietly. Yeah. He's Without not making a, a show of it. Classy. He's not doing a classy. He's not What is a classy way to do cocaine? By yourself in the bathroom. Yeah. Quietly. 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 <laughs> Don't, you flush the toilet when you sniff. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows that, Dan. Just what, what if it's multiple people in the bathroom? Then you're, that's not not not, yeah. you're not doing a classy. You're not doing a classy. You should have no more it's, than one person in that bathroom. you and maybe your prostitute. And what if it's a bar bathroom? Then you're trash. You're at a bar? And yeah, just, what are you, you talking about? You're at a bar? You have a bar you in your house, bros, you fucking trash? And you're just doing key bumps. Yeah, that's god awful. Oh. So <laughs> these people are... Are you it, new to cocaine? I'm doing it all wrong, then. <laughs> yeah, apparently you are. But you have... I mean, look, you got a sleeve. That's how sleevers do cocaine. 
I, I feel like the sleeve immediately disqualifies me from ever doing anything classy. Yeah, yeah 100%. No, I mean, yeah, you... <laughs> No one that's classy. Has you could you could own the yacht club, and people would still ask you to bring out another tray of hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They would also tell you to wear longer sleeves. <laughs> They'd be like, "Put that away." Uh, where's your manager? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, back to the story. At the time, Cosimo, who we just talked about, was the patriarch. Uh, so, at the time of this event, Cosimo's grandson Lorenzo de Medici, or Lorenzo the Magnificent, had taken over. Uh, his father had died, who was Cosimo's son. I'm guessing it was. <laughs> he was like a poet, and he didn't know as much about banking. It sounds like a terrible magician. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, well, do you know what you want to know what his dad's name was? What? Piero the Gouty. Gouty? Gouty. 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 Piero the oh. Gouty. Oh, wow. I don't he even had a lot means. of gout. Shit. <laughs> Dude, he had the king's disease, man. Can you imagine being so gouty and limpy that you get named the Gouty? So, you know he didn't name himself that. It, man, if, if food wasn't so... Yeah, brand the broken. Is, uh, is type 2 diabetes kind of a king's disease now? Oh, that's a peasant's disease. Kings are fit. But gout. It's a king, isn't it well, a king's back disease then, eat Back so well? then, everyone was fit because no one could afford to eat that much. That's fair. Now they it's the opposite. Yeah, yeah, true. Right? So, uh, now a king's disease is anorexia. I think a king's disease is just cocaine addiction. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. King's disease you go to passengers' Malibu. Is addiction, yeah. yeah. Um, so Lorenzo and his brother uh, Giuliano were considered the two wealthiest people in the world at the time. Like, not the two, but like up there. They were right. top shit. Uh, Lorenzo's power was so secure that there was little room for competing families to even like assert any actual authority. Although the Pazzi family remained one of the wealthiest in the 15th century, their fortunes were not near as robust and they had, uh, you know, kind of seen the Medici brothers as a natural target for their resentment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, new money trash. That's right. They were like, fuck these new money bastards. Yeah. Like we were noble. We yeah. did banking after <laughs> these guys were selling. <laughs> they, tried, they tried to old money their way into their business. Yeah. And they were like, why aren't we as successful as the guys that invented this? Fuck. Like, yeah. like these fuckers were selling oranges to our grandpa. Actually, it's funny. You mentioned that their cre the Medici crest does have five oranges on it. So they might have been at some point maybe. starting in oranges um, fruit stand. Yeah, maybe uh, opposition to Florence's leading family extended beyond the walls of Florence though. And beyond just like nobility and rich people, the Medici family had recently provoked the anger of Pope Sixtus the fourth, both through anti-papal rhetoric and by refusing to accept the political appointments, the Pope had hoped to make in Northern and Northern Italy. Uh, these are a couple things that happened that really kind of set the stage for the conspiracy to kill these two guys off. So there's three people that are really important. Girolamo Riario, he arranged to buy Amola, a small town, uh, with the aim of establishing a new papal state for Pope Sixtus. And that town laid between Florence and Venice. Lorenzo de' Medici, however, had arranged in May of 1473 to buy that town from the Duke of Milan for $100,000. Okay. But the Duke subsequently agreed to sell it instead to Sixtus for 40000 because it's a papal state and it's like to get favor with the, the Pope and right, things like right. that. You make up that 60 with favors, the Pope and heaven and all that stuff. You're right. Yeah. You're buying your way into You're going to have to talk me out of being on the Pope's side right now. Cause yeah. I'm, I'm pro I'm, I'm kill these motherfuckers. The Pope wants it. Yeah, exactly. Um, there was just one stipulation. The Duke of Milan would have his illegitimate daughter married to this guy, Girolamo, but Lorenzo was like, hold on, motherfucker. Uh, this was supposed to be financed by my bank, this sale. So I'm saying no. Okay. He Wait, the sale to the Pope? The, the sale to Girolamo. Okay. Um, so the Pope... There's too many syllables there. Like, imagine screaming Girolamo in bed. I actually had to take a couple times to read this just to make sure I was reading about the same person. Because there's so many, like, similar Wild names. Wild-ass Italian names. <laughs> yeah, in, like, 15th century Italian names. So... Lorenzo's like, no, our bank's not financing it. So the Pope has to like scramble to get the sale to go through. And he like negotiates something with the Pazzi family. What do you mean scramble? You're the Pope in the fucking 1400s. Having to lift a finger, I imagine, is scrambling. Yeah, I would just walk 10 feet outside where you sleep, pick something up. It's probably worth $40,000. 
and just there you go. You yeah. bought the town. Think about this. That scrambling it's is. Like, oh, I have which, to find another bank to yeah. buy this town. Yeah. Which, yeah. Uh, which, a, which a golden statue of a Jesus should I sell? Uh, what, <laughs> what? There's a million of them. Just take your hat. Yeah, off. but yeah. they didn't want just to sell send any. A, just send like a splinter of a bone from Saint Peter to some idiot that'll buy it for forty. I mean, it's all worth forty. They didn't grand. want to sell anything. They He's wanted offended. it to get paid for. Right. right yeah. Right. He's so uh, Sixtus tried to then. You know, there's a whole thing about that and the Potsy family's like no we'll finance it so the Potsy yeah. family and Sixtus get in good graces then in a way of paying them back Sixtus tries to appoint some high positions of the Potsy family including a family member uh, Francesco Salviati uh, to an archbishopship but okay by the way the, the best part about this is it's like oh you're gonna be an archbishop they still fuck yeah oh no a lot all these people are married these people are fucking yeah oh yeah dude all the time like that was pretty clear it's like yeah this guy was married had a bunch of kids he's an archbishop it's like <laughs> yeah. oh oh okay <laughs> just looks the other way um yeah so but the medici family had so much pull in florence that they would just be like no we're not approving that so they like blocked some of the Pazzi family from even ascending up the ranks in religion. so they basically like put sanctions on them yeah yeah essentially Economic that's what, sanctions yeah they were like they're like massive weapon they're they're like no 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 and that's how exactly the Pazzi were going to try and get up and over the medici was through the papacy at the time right and trying to skip the line yeah i get it that makes sense so um although the Pazzi were the main actors in the assassination attempt they had powerful allies obviously with florentine noble families and they actually had the blessing of the Pope to kill the two Medici brothers well, at a certain point. It is God's way. Yeah, that's fine then. Uh, so it's, it's, if the Pope tells you you can do it, it's not a sin. Yeah, it's not a moral, mortal sin. Not even a venial sin. No. Well, it's just not a sin. It's kind of funny the way the Pope carefully words it, but I'll get to that in just a second. So there's three people I mentioned. Girolamo, Francesco Salviati, and then one of the Pazzi brothers. God, these people are so Italian. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Italy or Jersey. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> it is pretty Lord. Jersey. Uh, they this go up to Pope. Like, this is just like, I don't know. It's like repeat customers at a fucking sweatsuit, like, <laughs> fucking shop. No, sweatsuit. But, like, you know, someone picking up, a, like, a meatball hoagie. Yeah. Down the, the street. Guillermo's good. This is the table outside of the deli. Yeah. Yeah these three guys approach Pope Sixtus and they're like, Hey, we want your support. Pope Sixtus says very carefully. This is a carefully worded statement in the terms of his holy office. I am unable to sanction the killing. I would like to make it clear that it would be of great benefit to the papacy to have Medici removed from their position of power in Florence and that I would deal kindly with anyone who did this. They then instructed uh, the men to do what they deemed necessary to achieve the aim and said that he would give them whatever support he could. So his carefully worded way of saying, I can't condone this is, we would love it if someone else yeah. did. That's great. In nome de Patre, Petre, Spiritu Santo. Yeah, I'm yeah. fine with it. Yeah. Look, if the, po if the Pope's cool with it. I love that that's the carefully worded way of saying it without yeah. being unholy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man. Shucks, I can't do it, but love it if someone else could. What's dumb on the Pope's part, though, what this idiot Pope didn't realize is that it, you're the Pope. So if you say it. It's the law. God wills it. You're yeah. infallible. Do you think, so if you're mm -hmm. like. If, I think you have to respect that line, though, and not cross it so that that yeah. doesn't get. Because you can, you can saturate that. You you're can over, you're essentially sure. still God's PR team. So like you have to carefully word it. Yeah, that's fair. But I mean, whatever you say goes. Yeah, but if you abuse that, then no one's going to listen to you anymore. Right. That's fair. You don't need yeah. to do it for a petty murder. Right. This isn't as big. Like, yeah. to the Pope, this is an inconvenience. Yeah, this guy calls for crusades. Y exactly. So uh, plans for the assassination of both Lorenzo and his younger brother, Giuliano, had begun in Rome as early as the summer of 1477, but the conspirators were unable to put words into action until late April of the following year. I don't want to. All right. So we just did an episode last week on hay. We always think of societies in the past, even 50 years ago, let alone 100 years ago, whatever, let alone 600 years ago. We always think of them as overly simple, not very complicated, so on and so forth. Right. Correct? Like, we, we really oversimplify these people. We don't give them enough credit ever. We don't even look at them as people. We look at them as kind of like dumb knuckle draggers. Yeah, dumb fucking idiots. Yeah. Like, you, you didn't have an iPhone? Fuck you. Uh, yeah, they had to retain them, information in their heads. And yeah. we give them zero credit because, oh, great pyramids? Oh, aliens built those. Right. 
aliens did it. Had to be aliens. Couldn't have been man no. or machinery. Skilled craftsmen and engineers. Couldn't have been yeah. that. No. no. All you monkeys couldn't have done shit. Uh, but I do have to say, what's the conspiracy? Walk up and stab them or shoot them. There are guns and it's not hard. By the way, think, we did an episode on the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. Did those people seem well planned? And this is, that's 500 years later. Yeah. Well, he, if he had the meatball hoagie, he probably doesn't assassinate Franz Ferdinand. Oh, no, we did talk about that in our... What's the sandwich? Yet to be Any yeah. sandwich, yeah. But here's the thing, like, what? It's like the end of the 15th century? Yeah. Just kill him. I don't think they have guns. They do. Well, not really. They do. Not wild, like widely available. Uh, yeah, they're there, but yeah, okay, fair enough. But either way, stab him, whatever. Well, it's not hard to kill someone. With your pikes, the way they decide to do it is what makes it a conspiracy. Okay. There's a lot of plotting. Which there doesn't need to be. Which get well, a give a hobo a knife. Well, kill the fucking listen, guy. Okay, Don't, let's not kill the entire like storyline to Assassin's Creed Two. Like, without this plan, there's no video game. So there's this it's actually, Assassin's Creed Two. You do assassinate the Pope at some point, yeah. Oh, the Pope. I thought you meant a Medici. Well, probably a Medici too. There's probably a Medici in yeah. there, but um, yeah, it's actually really hard to kill these guys because they built secret corridors in the city to move around without actually having to go outside. Fair enough. Yeah. And I, I mean, I assume they have bodyguards too, but like... They have a lot of bodyguards. You can't just stop a guy from popping out with a pike, well, right? <laughs> well, you have your own pike. Let me get to it, because okay. there's a really easy way to kill these guys, okay. and they come up with it. Pretty, like, it. It is essentially, let's just stab them. Are they right. like the buddy people of Power Rangers? Just They're very not. easy to defeat? You touch them in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, they originally planned to slay the Medici while the brothers were in Rome during Easter of 1478, but the two did not travel to Rome that year. The murderers postponed their plans until the 19th of April when they arranged a lunch with both brothers at a villa in the nearby hill town of Fisoli. So they're going to have lunch with the people that are going to murder them. And it was the Potsies? The Potsies so the and Potsies a couple of... The Potsies were like, hey, let's, let's have some fucking we're lunch, like, yeah, we're all rich. Talk let's some shop, yeah, do yeah, some yeah. bank talk, you break bit, bread. You bank, I bank, but we hate each other. This is the... Uh, they How's kind of have a... Go? They have another... What? How's that meal going? Right? Yeah, what do you even talk about? Yeah, like the, the weather? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it like that... I've only been through the first season of Succession, but is it like when they're at that weird orgy bachelor party situation? They're just like talking to other assholes? Might be. Yeah. Maybe. Just with, like, less noise. They offer more drugs. Yeah. More harps. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, though, before the lunch, Giuliano became ill and could not attend, so the assassination was put off again and planned for the following week. This time, the conspirators managed to get invited to a banquet at the Medici Palace in Central Florence after Sunday Mass, and it was after this meal that they intended to cut down their host. They were going to cut him in their own house. Okay. Uh, killing your host, of course, Bad look. Right. So, yeah. Or essentially, your the Medici's are like, they won't do this here. It's kind of like politically shitty for them. <sighs> no honor. The no honor with the criminals these days. Right. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was shitty to kill Caesar in the Senate, too. But just... so normally you kill people in the shittiest places. Right. Which yeah. is anywhere to kill someone. It's um, no good place to kill someone. It's like unless they're like holding a gun to a baby's head and right. it's like, I'm going to do it. And then oh, you fuck yeah. Let's say your, your life ends with you being stabbed. Where would you like to be stabbed? Wherever it's quickest, because that seems awful. Yeah, like there was through a, the brain. Where do you want to? <laughs> like, no, no. Where do you want to bleed out? Where's oh, like what out? place? What's your final view? Because, like, uh, I would love to say like a beautiful place, but I'm enjoying that moment probably until I'm stabbed. Yeah, but you don't want to die in like a an alley. No, I I'd rather do like it, some crackhead. Uh, ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Prefer an alley or somewhere populous to as opposed to like somewhere remote where animals are going to eat me for the next fucking. Two I'm fine weeks. with that. I'd rather animals eat me than get maybe buried. a beach. The beach? Yeah. You can get so stabbed on a beach in eaten Italy. By, eaten by crabs. Eaten by crabs. Seagulls. Whatever. I get a nice view at Maybe the end. Seagull shit. Maybe sunset. So, I'm going to just get back to this because it's important. I'm, you, you don't have to ask permission. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. do it though. I, d I didn't want to cut off your where do you want to get stabbed convo, but Go I want to talk it. about this. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere is fine. Okay. <laughs> no preference. Stab me wherever. No preference. Seven Eleven. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, uh, like once again, it's very realistic for Rob here. <laughs> once again, Giuliano is unable to join the meal after mass because he's not feeling great. This Seems guy's like he knows. <laughs> he's like, man, I just don't know about these dinners with yeah. these he's guys. He's getting some intel. So 
at the last minute, they made a quick decision. The assassinations would take place during the mass and they would have two priests pressed into their service to fill out the list of assassins. Ooh, that's pretty hardcore. <laughs> yeah, no, this is where it gets like Godfather, Game of Thrones yeah, shit. Yeah, offing someone in a mass is... When the, making the priests do it. Yeah, I mean, look, I've seen it done. I've, I've been an altar boy for a lot of masses, and yes, like sometimes someone gets killed during a mass, but like... It does happen. It needs to be serious. Yeah. <laughs> and they do need to pay me as the altar boy. Uh, yeah, no, oh, dude, this one... Just, this one assassination during a mass, I didn't get paid. And I was like, dude, this fuck, I did a funeral two days earlier that paid me $20. Yeah. I'm going to have to do another bullshit. funeral for yeah. this. It must yeah. not have been Italian. One time I did a wedding, but this is a real thing, by the way. When you're an altar boy for funerals you get paid. and weddings, you get paid. I got paid $100 once. Yeah. One Damn. time. For ringing some bells. One time, some fucking bitch who got married in the church. She stiff you? Oh, worse. I wish she stiffed me. Because we're kids, right? Right. Did she we're take like five dollars from Sixth, you? Seventh grade. You're like maybe twelve, thirteen. She gave us puzzles. She gave us. Like she gave a you a toy. But she gave you a bad a toy. A puzzle's not a toy. That's trash. Either That's cardboard way. and shit. She was like, "Look, I got you a present." It's almost like a homework assignment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like do this. Literally, I was like, "Give me money." What the fuck? It's like, do you not understand yeah. how the Catholic Church works? Yeah. Because clearly it's you don't. Pay to play. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, that thing. You don't get the most to, American thing about religion. You don't get to church. bury your relative until you give me money. Man. Dig them up. <laughs> Dig them up. Get them back. <laughs> you don't. It's a fun fact. You're. Your dead relative does not go to heaven if you don't pay the altar no, boy. Stuck in purgatory for all eternity. Mm -hmm. So the Potsies and their accomplices and the priests they enlisted plan the attack for a particular moment in the mass at the elevation of the host. What is that? You raise the host above your head. It's what is the host? blessing the Eucharist. What is yeah. the host? Communion. Just, oh, okay. Uh, Jesus' body. Okay. Yeah, got the so. host. The flesh, the flesh wafers? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is oh. when it becomes the flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the middle of the, uh, that sacrament, the Eucharist or whatever. It transforms from essentially like a, a stale ice cream cone into the body of Christ. Yes. That so, was the funniest part, by the way. So we were at uh, Veronica's wedding, and uh, and she's, you know, Veronica's been on the show. She's read our uh, shit. Our, right, right. She, uh, she didn't invite me to her wedding. Yeah, yes. you weren't invited. Uh, she read your future with uh, tarot cards and stuff like that. And uh, I got the Twin Towers. Yes, you did. You got the 9-11 card. Yeah. And, but she was like, they, but so they did like, had a little like witchcraft, uh, like witchy ceremony or whatever. They like with the four elements and everything like yeah. that. And like, I don't know if they thought it was going to be edgy or if like, cause I remember even being asked by someone might've been Veronica or Taylor, like, or, but I, she said it in her Instagram story too. She was like, oh yeah, like, can you, like it's going to be a little witchy cause we're le like lesbians. Can you deal with whatever? And like, well, I grew up drinking blood. <laughs> so and eating flesh. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think your witch that's magic. By the yeah, way, I don't think your witchcraft I also is literally gonna impress me. <laughs> went to Rachel's wedding, which was a Harry Potter themed right. wedding. So actual witchcraft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just funny because it was like witchcraft, huh? And I was like, well, when I really think about it, it's it's all magic. In yeah. It's no not it, yeah. what you did. It's like I'm gonna light some incense. It's like, well, I was drinking. We were drinking. Some guy blood, turns this blood. wine into blood. Yeah. for me. So and I started and it's the only reason I was able to drink wine at the age of thirteen. <laughs> That's right. Thirteen. Fucking eight. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Eight. <laughs> okay, you Catholics. At the appointed moment, Bernardo. Bar Baroncelli, a member of an old Florentine noble family, plunged his knife into Giuliano de' Medici's chest, uttering the words, Here, traitor! <laughs> Who did he betray? <laughs> no he no just, one. He, just, he was just, they were better than them. He was like, just thinking of something what? cold to say before he offed a man. Yeah, he, he I didn't think, rehearse it. No, because no, they changed the plan at the last minute, so yeah. he had no time to think of a good... Like John Wilkes Booth, Six Semper Tyrannus, he uh, rehearsed that. Yeah, of course he did. Well, he's, he's a fucking actor. loser actor. That right. is such an actor thing to yell before. He yelled in How Latin? many times did he say that in the mirror before Six he yelled? Six Semper oh, Tyrannus! More than that, uh, him and his family, that was their favorite play to be in. Him and his... Uh, brother and his dad they were all actors and Julius Caesar was like their their shit like they that yeah. was their best that was a play they're best known for and blah 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 so he, he was basically cosplaying as fucking Bruce. yeah but wasn't the play that 
that happened was the American My American cousin or something. My like American that. cousin? Yeah, something what like was that. the connection to Caesar there? He just yelled it because he, he was killing Caesar. In, in Julius Caesar he gets murdered and Brutus just like six up Tyrannus. Okay. Ne- always to tyrants. I think yeah. is what translates. Death to the tyrant. Yeah. Anyway, so John Wilkes Booth was like, Yeah, I'm Brutus which I guess he didn't read about the rest of Brutus's history, which he lived very quickly. Yeah, it was fast. Yeah. Uh, so here, traitor, that's what he yells. Boy, Boston Corbett. So then, get, get. Francisco de Piazzi, a younger member of the clan, followed Baroncelli's lead, sinking blow after blow onto Giuliano's chest with his dagger. Witnesses recalled the dark red blood billowing into Giuliano's white linen shirt. All in all, Giuliano body, Giuliano's body suffered between 12 and 19 stab wounds and died. What did, he, what did the other guy yell? Like, that's what you get for fucking my wife like just ra- they're just accusing him of things he didn't do at this point <laughs> they just called him a traitor that's yeah. not like he was betraying uh i guess their wealth because he was better yeah. than them at I getting mean, money maybe now, i guess they could say he was betraying the pope do they finish the mass <laughs> no uh at the same moment the two plotting priests race towards lorenzo and position themselves behind him uh they flash the concealed weapons one of the priests is like pitches forward and grabs him by the shoulder and goes to like thrust a knife in him, but the dagger doesn't fully reach the target. So the priests that they just enlisted aren't the best assassins. It turns out. Yeah. Bummer. Instead, uh, it's they, not what they've been trained to penetrate. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, they kind of scrape his neck. Lorenzo responds. What? Yeah. They just like graze, shave. They just like kind of <laughs> nick him. Right. Uh, so he's like, he's bleeding. It's not yeah. good looking, but he's not like fatally injured. So he's or anything. like, ah, it's like, what the fuck? So then Lorenzo uh, responds by grabbing a short sword from somebody right next to him and like going after these guys. He exchanges just blows with them. And then uh, he gets swept to safety by his friend, Paul Ziano. Right. Because that's his name. These are just <laughs> the most interchangeable ass Italian names. Uh, you could just be like, yeah. And then Guma Namana uh, swept like, but out of the, like it just, it's all just Italian syllables here. Yeah, you don't know who you're yelling at half no. the time. Uh, immediately after attack, members of the congregation pour out of the cathedral, fleeing the bloody chaos inside. When the Medici allies realize what's happening, they proceed to the nearby Medici palace, arm themselves, and return to the, c- the cathedral to retrieve Lorenzo. Uh, citizens are freaking the fuck out because here's the thing. People love the Medici. Right. They brought art to their city. They made Florence the fucking epicenter. Also of, a little bit to aspire to. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Like yeah. They're not noble. It is, it is not again, again, not rags to riches, but it's up. It shows social mobility in the highest manner. Yeah. So they pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. Really did by inventing money manipulation. Yeah. But, uh, so the citizens start arming themselves, but they have limited Im- information. Uh, they don't really know how to react. Uh, they didn't know if both the guys had been killed. They didn't know if the town's defenses had been compromised. The people were freaked out and pissed off. At this point, Jacopo Pazzi, an elder <laughs> member of the clan, <laughs> <laughs> Another Potsy. That would be. This is like if this was Irish, it would be like Seamus Mc McMickelson. Like no, it's just I, like I what like, the fuck is this name? I feel like this story is problematic. They should have. They, you can't name all these guys. This guys. It's fucked up. Yeah. It, there's another joke he told. Two on the nose. Yeah. It's like. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah he, the script's getting denied. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, can we name him anything else? Yeah, it's like you can't. It's like it's like you're like writing a story in Harlem. You're like, you can't name eight people Jamal, dude. <laughs> come, like, on. come on, please. So uh, this Potsy <laughs> is too too Italian. <laughs> he runs into the central town square near the main government buildings with 150 mercenaries calling for a revolt against the Medici. Uh, he soon realized that the Florentine people were like, no, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, Worse, though, was he was supposed to have a bunch of papally supported reinforcements from Sixtus. Mm-hmm. They just decided not to show up. Hey, the Swiss Guard, you know, sometimes it takes some time off. So this is how Sixtus was able to, like, kind of have culpability, too. It's like, I didn't say right. shit. I didn't tell him what to do. I mean, uh, you know, I can't control everyone that gets stabbed in, you know, Christendom. But So he's like, shit, I got to get out of here. He runs away. But they start rooting out Potsy family members pretty right. quick. So, uh... The main actors of the plot were soon rooted out. Some of the conspirators who had already been detained in the Palazzo de Signori were thrown out of the second story windows of the palace. I guess that was like a classic way to kill people back in the day. I think it is. Masius threw some people out of windows too. Dude, so, well, that's still a thing. Honestly, I feel like they always say, 
I, our friends who work here who were like in the the war on terror who went to the Middle East, they're like, you don't understand, dude. It's like four they're like four hundred years behind in a lot of ways. Like culturally, in a lot of ways. Like socially. It's like, we don't really need this whole jury thing. We're just gonna kill right. you. And like a very popular way to fucking kill people over there, especially gay people, is just toss them off a roof and shit like that. So it's like a it is like a weirdly like this is the way we're gonna do it type Throw of thing. Through the sky door. <laughs> the moon wait, wait, the, the moon, moon door. door. Make him fly. Yeah. <laughs> Make him fly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they throw these guys out of the windows, and the crowd there is, like, ready for it. So the crowd below starts stripping these people naked and then cutting their bodies in half. Uh, both Francesco de Pazzi and Bernardo Baroncelli, who had delivered the fatal blows to Giuliano, were hanged in the public squares within hours. Uh, Policiano himself, the guy that saved Lorenzo, reports that the mob was so enraged that a member of the crowd approached one of the bodies and just began eating the dead man. Sick. He's like, fuck you! Hell like, yeah. eat him. Uh, this is, I mean, this just sounds like what they did to Mussolini. These people are... It's kind of like, it, it reminds me of Gaddafi, too, yeah. in a way, where it's just like, we're going to fucking violate you with a bayonet. Dude, yeah. Do you remember that video? Where they uh, both fucked him with a bayonet? Wasn't yeah. he alive? He was alive. And um, Putin apparently watched that and was like, oh, I got to make sure this never happens. He's not doing a good job. No, he's really not. Um, outrage continued in Florence and corpses of the conspirators soon littered the town square over the course of the next few days. Members of the Pazzi family were captured and executed or exiled. Others who had even just participated in the plot were apprehended, beaten, mutilated, and hanged. But it was the cat. A little more eaten? One was eaten. I don't know. Maybe some more eaten. Dude, Uh, you're so, that's, Man, that's so fucking metal to be like, fuck this guy. <laughs> I'm going to eat his soul. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, not even, bite out of his not even cooking him over the fire. Yeah. But they all remember Eating Jacopo in the town square. And he had the most gruesome death. So uh, following the failed coup, Jacopo fled to the nearby village of Castagnano. Mm-hmm. Once his whereabouts were discovered, he was dragged back to town with a horse. Uh, concerns that the crowd would rip him to shreds led to his being heavily guarded. Upon interrogation, Jacopo confessed. It was hanged shortly thereafter. The death isn't the gruesome part. That sounds fine. Yeah. Well, if it happens after the death, it's not, well, it's, it's not really gruesome for him. Yeah. It's gruesome for everyone else, but it's a principle of gruesomeness. I guess. It sounds like a party for everyone else. Did they rip out his spine? In the days following his death, there was a popular outcry concerning the place of burial among his family members. Medici supporters living in the countryside complained that his intermittent, his uh, body in the holy ground of the countryside was a bad omen for their grain crops. So, true, true, yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> so a group of angry citizens marched to Jacopo's tomb, unearthed his body, and reburied it outside the town walls. But that wasn't good enough. After the reburial, as we know, Italians love unearthing shit Mm -hmm. and reburying it a lot after the reburial jacobo's body was unearthed yet again this time by a group of children who then dragged the body through the streets of florence pulling it along with the hangman's news that had been buried with the corpse when they arrived at the gotta say those kids didn't get enough screen time (laughs) usually it's too much screen time but i feel like a screen would have benefited those children they uh they really needed more because they were very inventive. When they arrived, they decided to roll up to the Pazzi household okay. with the body. Were people still living there? Yeah. The children what, knocked. The, the like eight people they didn't murder? Yeah. Okay. The children knocked on the door with the dead man's head asking if anyone was home. The body was then known. They didn't want to take the fucking right. head and body they They're just like, dragged no, through we, the city we put that where we wanted to put it <laughs> uh the body was then thrown into the arno river where it floated along and eventually came to shore bloated and decayed and then just washed away oh that's not that bad not bad at all so i was expecting the one worse. guy got eaten yeah i was expect- <laughs> yeah most people were cut in half the eating guy yeah the eating guy was really the worst <laughs> That is insane to think. It's like, I'm so mad. Yeah. I just, I just, I just bite someone. <laughs> um, so this attempt was to eventually just thwart and dissolve the Medici family. What right. they ended up doing was killing the only other person that would get all the wealth of the Medici family. Mm-hmm. Um, and Lorenzo actually had some worries that Giuliano would try to overtake him. Okay. So they just basically concentrated all the power they consolidated the medici family all into one dude it made everybody in florence love them more yeah and then they again were able to just rule for a lot longer than they probably should have been they ruled for about 300 years yeah so i mean if you're gonna go for the king you best not miss best not fucking miss um yeah that's the story of the potsy conspiracy and the medici family what a bad conspiracy 
they were really bad at it. They didn't do a good job killing those people. No, usually when your plan doesn't go through, you don't go, all right, fuck, uh, priests. Yeah. Nice. Uh, let's get the priests to do it. Uh, priests, not typically good murderers. No, but they got the Pope's blessing. No, they didn't get his blessing. They got his they, neutrality. They got his, I don't care if you do that. Did he have to answer for any of this or no? No. Yeah, the Pope, essentially, like, they were having a vote on to murder him or not, and the Pope abstained. Oh, he went full Pontius Pilate. But Actually, it's even worse. He didn't abstain. He was just like, I'd help out whoever did it. Yeah. But I can't say I condone it. Well, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like the first China abstention on this invasion of Ukraine. They're like, I can't say I'm not into it, but I can't, definitely can't say I am into it. Right. So abstain. Do you. Yeah. Do you, Russia. Hey. He's like, hey, hey, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I used to abstain in chapter. That's the be best a, vote. Just to be a dick. That's the best it, vote in it, chapter. The secretary is like, and like, what is it? Uh, Forty-two to thirty-seven. Okay, it's like, no, thirty-six. I abstained. <laughs> Mark that abstention. <laughs> Recording secretary had to write that down. Yeah, yeah. It's like one Dan abstention. Ab Dan abstains again. I was actually the guy who would always be like, you know, we are not at quorum, so we have to not do chapter tonight. Oh fuck! That sounds awesome. <laughs> this is a really fun one. I passed a rule in chapter. Do you guys have uh, voluntary comments? Uh, at the end of it, yes. Yeah. Remarks. Voluntary remarks. Yeah. We had that, and that would extend chapters sometimes like 30 to 40 Because people minutes. would tell stories. They'd tell stories. They're and they'd not be like, natural stories. They'd be like, oh, and like, okay, hold on. Okay. I just want to say something about the trash can on the second floor. Okay, like, yeah, we all use it. I already it. hate the person you're pretending yeah. to be. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know this story. It's that's like, not yeah. even that bad because they had a legitimate issue. The worst no, is they when didn't. They'd be like, I, and it gets like, I think we should maybe start emptying it. And I should have brought up a new business, but I just want to say it because it's for the pledges. So it's not really a new business thing. I don't like it that it gets all the way to the top. And I, I know we fill it up really fast. Yeah, but there's a guy maybe, worse than that guy. Who's that it's guy? the person rehashing a weekend story that wasn't that good. Oh, yeah. Or someone telling the story that might not have been there. That's another that's one. That's even better. That's, yeah. a, that's a weird one. Because it's like, dude, I don't think you were there. He's like, dude, so I had these. They were, I was no, no, I mean, we were girl. so blacked out. Like, oh, it's like, there, bro. You mean that fight at Balls that you weren't at? It was fucking crazy, <laughs> yeah. dude. No, man, I wasn't there either. I know it was cool. I heard the story from people that were there. We Thanks. had a... We had an uncapped time limit on that initially, and after a year of that, I, 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 I you cracked down. I was like, I didn't crack down. I, I had to just initiate the vote as like a member. I was like, ten minute cap on voluntary comments from or voluntary. Ten remarks, minutes from is now long. On. Ten that's, minutes that's is long. Too, that is too long. No, that should be like, dude, you got four sentences. Right. No, no, not on a single thing for the entire. Oh, no, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten, yeah. okay. Okay, no, for the entire. I was like, you're giving everyone of, ten minutes. Oh fuck no! I would never was told, taking ten minutes. I was yeah. about to say I would have never told them that because everyone no, would have used no, would have no, clocked no, no. it. It should yeah. be like a best man speech. Yep. Yeah. Quick. To Sentimental. It was just like you could jokes. Say? You could tell at those meetings there were certain people that was like, this is the most I'll ever get to talk in front of anyone ever. Where anyone will give a shit, and they would just be like, "I just think that," and it's like you—you you had nothing to say when you raised your hand. You, oh, it, our thing wasn't like it was like to end chapter. Everyone bangs the gavel, so it goes around the room. What a yeah. Waste. And then um, if that you is, have the gavel, you get to talk. That is excessive. Yeah, yeah, that is excessive. No, I agree. I hated it. <laughs> it's like, please, we're done. This is it. We finished. We closed chapter. Why? Are, what, what is happening? No, and that's the thing. That and then like arguments about bylaws, where I was like. I'm creating a bylaw to suspend bylaws. Would we want to suspend yeah. bylaws? Yeah. And, and then, then I like, would always try to table things. Oh, oh tabling, 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 was tabling, glorious, really good. If you know anything about uh, procedure and organizations like that, the sole point of that meeting Robert's is to get that meeting the done. Rules of Parliament. Yeah, it's to get the meeting done yeah. as fast as possible. There's no other actual goal. No yeah. one wants to be there. We're in college. Ta tale as old of time is that assholes will just keep talking. Yeah, go to a city council meeting where Ugh. there's remarks. Yeah. That's when you get the real crazies. Anyway, uh, what'd you guys learn? Uh, I learned that, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> cool. I, I don't know what I learned. I learned that uh, banking is profitable. <laughs> uh, Very good lesson to learn. Yeah. Uh, don't follow your passion. I, follow the money. I learned that people should listen to the Pope more. I, I blame these people for straying from the one true uh, representative of Christ on earth. Okay. Why are you looking at me so hard? 
I, uh, I, I, I learned something today. What'd you learn? Uh, the difference between like a mob hit in maybe the 70s or 80s and an Italian assassination in the 1400s. There's a few syllables, not really. It's it's hardly any different. My yeah. God. Those <laughs> yeah. names. Yeah. Yeah, that was a tough one for me. Yeah, I'm impressed with you for even I half try. pronouncing that. I Honestly, when I was writing this episode up, I was like, I'm going to get fucking roasted yeah. for these names. Like, yeah. it, it was so hard at one point to follow the plot line, like the narrative, because the names were so close in some of the parts. Where it's, it's like, it's Giuliano and like Guillermo and like all that. If this was a show, you know what I mean? It would on be like canceled. Netflix or HBO or something like that. No, it wouldn't be can- Well, maybe. But the point would be is you would not remember. Yeah, it doesn't get past the pilot. You wouldn't remember any of their names. No. You would be like, oh, that's the, the handsome actor with the brown hair. Like, oh, yeah, the, the, there's the blonde one. And like, oh, yeah, there's the, the, there's the mean chick. And you know what I mean? That's like, why I could never watch shows like The Tudors. Because the same shit. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if Game of Thrones had all similar names, no one would watch it. Yeah, it'd be like they had to make those people so different because there's so much going on that yeah. you wouldn't be able to follow. Well, it. Game of Thrones actually did a good job of re- keeping the names mostly really simple. Jon yeah. Snow, John Sansa. It was like they were like really unique but simple. Danny Even Daenerys. Yeah, they called her Danny though. Like it's yeah, yeah for sure. And I think the House Associations made it a lot easier. They too. did for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean the, it was tough to like kind of keep my thread. With the names. Yeah. This is like it, which is, by the way, another impressive thing. Although I don't know how well the Lord of the Rings pulled this off, but it's impressive that you remember anyone's name for Lord of the Rings other than Frodo and Sam. I barely do. I don't. Yeah. You remember Aragorn? I was going to say Aragorn's the only other one I know. uh, Uh, Orlando Bloom? No. No. One that I don't know then. Grimly? Grim, Grimly? Grimly. Gimli. Yeah. Gimli, Gimli. Sorry. Gimli, Gimli is the yeah. elf. Yeah. What, did, what was Orlando Lou's name? Yeah, see, I don't fucking know. Who knows? Uh, and then what was the, the wizard's name? Even Colin? Gandalf. Gandalf, yeah. yeah. Everyone knows Gandalf. Yeah, uh, for sure. But yeah, it's hard to remember a lot of those fucking. But after those ones, I guess you got Boromir and mm. Faramir. Uh, no one cares. Man, anymore. I know a lot of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fucking nerd. Anyway, uh, who's Hitler? Uh, money. Money is Hitler. That's easy. Yeah. Or uh, the Pope. Usury. <laughs> Interest? Interest, 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 interest is Hitler. Yeah. Interest can be Hitler. Debt. You know what? It hit? Debt is Hitler. <laughs> debt is Hitler. Cancel my debt. I. We're canceling Hitler, guys. I. I'll tell you what. I will not vote for a president who won't pay my mortgage. I'm just sick of it. Sounds so great. you're going to abstain. I'm sick of having a mortgage. <laughs> you're and I abstain. want. I want the government to pay for it. So credit and debt. That's my Hitler. Dan. Uh, the guy that Rob described in his chapter, he was Hitler every time. <laughs> the, guy, the guy from the story after the story? Yes. <laughs> you know what? I go with Dan on this yeah. one. The guy who talks during remarks when he has yeah. nothing to say. I that is probably. say, like. That's kind of a Hitler thing, though. It's like, I'm drunk and I want to talk. Yeah. I'm going to stand up in this beer hall. I've noticed a lot of stuff. Yep. I've got a couple things. Yeah, he is the worst. So he is Hitler. Well, that was. That was the type of thing where you leave that chapter. It's worse than murdering somebody in church. Yeah. You know what the best move is? Just skipping chapter altogether. Yeah. Getting fined. Dude. We, oh, we didn't find people for that. We, sh- we, we did for yeah. sure. Yeah. Hit me with that $50 fine, the, bro. Uh, the, we skipped it once. It was for the Mizzou KU basketball game and they tried to find us and we were like, are you fucking kidding? It was like a Monday night. Both teams were ranked. We're like, are, are you fucking kidding? Move me? chapter. Yeah. Suck my dick. Yeah. It's always Monday night too when the best specials were. Like best specials in Gainesville were Monday night. We had great, but I mean like our chapter we had chapter at like Mugs six. Mugs Monday. Go to Foo Bar so you can get a fucking mug smashed over your head. Hell yeah. Couldn't miss it. Sick. We we didn't have good specials on Monday. We go to Johnny's Beanery though. Twenty five cent wings. Oh, I'm sorry. Two dollar pitchers. We had trivia at Salty Dog on Monday. That's what I didn't want to miss. Ah, fuck. Salty Dog trivia was aces. I gotta say, man, I don't We're going too niche. I, I no longer I no longer miss like Saturday we do, nights in we do college not have that or B-roll. Friday nights in college, but I kind of miss Monday nights in college. Yeah. Wednesday nights, dude night. Uh, it sounds like you just miss college. Yeah. No, because I'm saying I don't like the weekend oh, the, stuff. Like yeah. that's whatever. But I do just kind of miss like like because Monday night was we would be watching Monday night football, eating like a pile of wings for five dollars and drinking like getting like, shit faced on Bud Light and yeah. the bill at the end of the night was like. Twenty five. I went out Monday. Went out Tuesday. Tuesday was always Lady Night. Wednesday was Guys Night. Uh, Thursday, Thursday, 
Friday, Saturday. I just didn't go out Sunday. Sunday was my day of rest. Yeah. I was like, S- Sunday's a big day at Mizzou, actually. I was actually, like, God. Yeah, Sunday's pretty big. We had Sunday fun day at UF as well. I would say Monday and Tuesday were the soft nights of Six Missouri. days a week I yeah, would drink. I used to, yeah. There was a while I just went out every night. Yeah. Not like that one guy that was from my fraternity that we interviewed a long time ago that went out like a hundred. But it's not like days. you're you're spending twenty bucks max. Yeah, dude, Saturday it was night. just like it was it, it was not even that. A lot of times, if it was like if you hit a special, you'd be getting out of there for like five bucks. <sighs> if it was like a pitcher, yeah, I miss college. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's our show, guys. Thanks for listening. Be sure to go to www.softcorehistory.com. Got some yes, dope merch. Got new merch. Tees, got some. Uh, crew next sweaters got some hats some new hats those are dope got the unabomber Gear. t-shirt and unabomber hoodie unity unity hoodie. Una hoodie check those out um yeah and please please Rate, tell subscribe. people about this shit we want you to tell your friends about this please yeah we're not desperate we have good listeners right we have advertisers we want more good shit. listeners i mean more. are we they good listeners money. though if they're not telling their friends they're not good listeners no they are they're just listeners yeah, yeah. if you can prove to me that you got two of your friends to listen and you're ever in Austin, I will literally, I will, I will pay for your bar tab that night. Not buying you shot. Rob will blow you. Yeah, I'll blow you. With money. Yeah. At a bar. Yeah. By blowing you, he will blow money at the bar. Money is what I call my mouth. Yeah. Because it's so money when it's <laughs> you sucking. You don't even know it. Sucking on does. anything, really. All right, that's enough for that. For uh, Rob Fox and Dan Richester, I'm Jake Goldman. And you just got soft served.